Okay, hello everyone. Um, uh, I, I I don't want it to be boring for you, so don't hesitate to. I really want it to be a talk between us, uh, really informal, not formal. So if you need to ask a question, if you need to interrupt me, please do it. It will be better for me because I I would feel like I'm speaking to my screen. Not so funny. Uh, so, um, I will begin by presenting myself. So, I'm Fila. I'm working at Capgemini. I'm from Algeria. I did there my uh, computer engineer. Then I moved to France in Paris to do a digital project designer uh, specialized master degree. Uh, it was at uh, Telecom Pytech um, and in um, in the, with the National Audiovisual Institute in Paris. So it was uh, six months of um, uh, modules such as UX design, design thinking, programming languages, and some modules about all that is uh, audiovisual, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. Um, Back then in Algeria, when I did my computer engineer, I, I, I took a, a little specialization in uh, artificial intelligence. That's why uh, today I'm working in this field. I began at Capgemini as a UX designer at first. Later, I will explain it to you what is a UX designer. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, this kind of uh, um, term. Yes, no? Um, I worked at the department package based solutions. So ah, you're writing, it's good. A bit. Okay, so I will explain it more later. Um, uh, I worked at the package based uh, solution services. What, what we do is that we have uh, package solutions that are pre developed and we go to the client site and we integrate them. I've been, I worked there as a business analyst, a UX design, designer, a project manager. Then I moved to another department, which is specialized in IA. It's called Insight and Data. So we work on the governance of the data and programming solutions in IA. And um, I happened to uh, join them because uh, even if in the beginning of my career, I didn't work at all in IA, at some point uh, in Capgemini, we had uh, an internal competition to uh, propose innovative solutions to address problematics in Capgemini or address new, new clients. And with a small group of um, my colleagues, we identified the problematic internally and we proposed a chatbot solution based on an EBM solution called Watson Assistant, one of the most powerful chatbot in, in the tech uh, universe. And with that uh, competition, uh, we won and we designed the, uh, a chatbot to answer questions. I don't know if you guys already, uh, I, if you have an iPhone, so you have Siri. And if you happen to go on uh, e-commerce uh, um, websites, I think you already interacted with the chatbot. So it, it's supposed to give you answers like a human, and it's supposed to interact with you as uh, friendly as possible and give you answers. So that's what we did internally. I won't get into boring tech details. So we go to the next slide. It's not working. Okay. So I asked you later if you knew what's, what is UX designer. So UX, it stands for um, user experience design. We, uh, it's, it's a domain or a field that is recent in France. Uh, it's a, it was uh, developed and uh, it, in, in USA. It is a new way to design uh, um, solutions in the, um, the computer science world, because when we used to design solutions, we only thought about the problem 
and uh, design a solution that will address and uh, solve the problem. But we never thought how this solution will be used. If, if it's going to be friendly, if it's going to be ergonomic, if it's going to be easy to be used, we never uh, thought when conceiving solutions, uh, we never uh, thought like you end users and uh, take uh, their needs in account. So this field of user experience design tend to, when conceiving solutions, we will not only uh, think and uh, consider uh, the solution to be improved, but also to be user-friendly, to, to be more easy to use, uh, more beautiful and with uh, colors that will be um, easy for the eye. For example, we have here uh, two remotes, A and B. Um, yeah, as you can see in the A, the first one, there is too many buttons, so it's hard to easily find the button we want to use. The one on the other side, the B one, is very apparate. There is uh, the same, um, I would say, functions, but uh, they are they are uh, lesser. They the colors are brighter, and it's easy on the eye. So to sum up, um, that's that's why we use the user experience design. So when we design solutions, they will be easier and friendly. Is, is it a, Do you have questions? Do you don't hesitate? You can just open the mic, not just write on the discussion field. No? Okay. Well, it's only day one, so they're, they're, they're very shy still, but don't worry, by, by day 15, they will all be chatting with every single speaker, so it's, it's just day one. <laughs> Yeah, no, because uh, that's what I say in the beginning. I, I don't want it to be formal because sometimes it's boring. So that's why I, I really want it to be a talk between us. So. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Okay, so why am I here today to speak uh, with you guys? And uh, I, I forgot to tell you, I'm really happy to work with you. I'm really excited to see all your projects. I, I read the one or two and uh, I found you all amazing. So um, uh, I'm here because I had a, a prize or a reward. Uh, it's a reward called Women Leaders in IA. It's organized by IBM. It has been, uh, this year, it's the third year they, they are giving this reward because, um, everything is against me, sorry. Um, we need to know that only 26 women uh, are represented and integrated in IA workforce projects around the world. It's really few. And uh, with this prize, uh, IBM wanted to encourage women to work in IA projects, to implicate themselves in IA projects, because IA is one of the technologies that, this, that is going to shape the world in the 50 years ahead of us. And uh, the duality of the world and the, the reality is shaped by women and men. So we cannot have only men implicated in AI projects, especially in the conception phase, because we need those solutions in IA that, that are developed, are going to be developed to really represent the equality of the gender in the world. That's why um, I was honored and I really appreciate this, this prize because at the first, I wasn't aware that only 26 women uh, in, around the world are were implicated in I, I project. So myself, I've become more aware of that, and it's important to have a women role model in in uh, in the tech world. Uh, even now, it's true that we have more women that tend to go in to the science fields and technological fields, but it's important to have women uh, who can speak about their experience as I'm doing today and 
uh, we can project and we can see that it's possible, we can do it, especially for me as an immigrant who came from North Africa. So it's really um, uh, uh, an important um, initiative from IBM and it should be, I, I hope that will be more of the, uh, those kind of initiative to make women be aware of the importance of engaging in IA projects. Um, I wanted to um, close the talk um, uh, by giving you some key advices that uh, was were important in my career, in my uh, in my years of study, that I wish someone told me uh, sooner. First of all, um, when I when I talk about curiosity, it's it's uh, important to build your knowledge about the technologies, about uh, the computer languages and etc. But it's also important to uh, open your eyes about uh, the world that is uh, beyond you because you need to have culture, you need to be curious about economy, you need to be curious about uh, everything around you because you need to anticipate the needs and because the technology ch shape human behaviors, you, if you're only, if you contain only on yourself about developing technical skills, you won't be ahead. You, you at some point you won't be able to go further and uh, learn more. And in the in the computer science field, the advances are really fast. So you always need to be on the page and read about new discoveries, read about new technologies. I will speak also about opportunities. Uh, in life, there is always um, one turn. Uh, at some point in your life, you will have to choose one path and you will have some opportunities. And I think there is always, there is not a good or a bad opportunities. All opportunities are good. So don't hesitate. If Even if you think I'm not good enough, I don't, I don't have much knowledge in this uh, technology or field, or I don't know, always believe in yourself and always try because it's only by trying that you will know if it's good for you or not. I will speak about group energy because uh, the chatbot that we designed uh, at Capgemini internally, we did it in a group uh, and the, the energy from this group made us uh, overcome many obstacles, uh, many problems, and you cannot succeed by yourself. You always succeed by working in groups. Uh, that's why in uh, this hackathon, uh, it's good that you work in group because you need to learn. But sometimes, um, even if you think you have uh, a better idea, you need to listen to your other colleagues or uh, friends in the group. You need, uh, you need to reach to someone when you are blocked, when you don't know what to do. There is always someone who can hear you out, who can give you an advice, who can... Uh, uh, walk you through the problem. So it's really, really important to learn to work in group. I will finish uh, with the, I just wrote anticipate. I was speaking uh, earlier about staying curious, staying in motion, anticipate the needs, anticipate uh, by reading, by uh, staying uh, not focused on one thing, but always open about other fields, about, about other domains, and uh, try to see what's ahead in 10 years, in five years, not just live in the present, but always see further. And I, okay, yes. So the opportunity, yes. So now uh, I, I did it really short because I wanted to leave 10 minutes. If you want to ask me some questions, please, not by writing, open your mics. My English is not that, that good. So if you're afraid about the English, no problem. Um, just go ahead, please. And don't be shy. 
Hi. Hi. Uh, did you ever feel discriminated because you were a woman? Um, yeah, two or three times. Um, it's never, um, how to say, it's never direct. It's always, it's, it's the meanest way, you know. Um, as once uh, I've been told that um, I did, I was, I, I wasn't, uh, I don't know what I was talking about, and I'm only um, um, a very young woman, so I don't know the word. So yeah, I, when when you have the, the this kind of uh, remarks or um, um, disob disobligent uh, words. Um, I always tend to prove to the person that uh, hurted me with um, stupid words that I, I'm just here to do my work and I'm, I'm proving you that I, I can do it and it, the person uh, will feel dumb and will regret, regret the words. It's, uh, it, you will always have people in your life that will tell you you're not good enough, you're not at your place, you don't know enough. But it, it's life, so we, we need always to go further. Great, thank you for sharing this. You're welcome, thanks for your question. Mohammed, you've raised your hand, uh, just unmute yourself, feel free to ask your question. Uh, okay, so um, um, as a person who, who have been involved in uh, really a lot of things, and I, I'm, I'm sure you were, you were interested in all these things. H how do you make your decision about like choosing a certain path and uh, just leaving the other things you are you are interested about? I, you know, um, I'm a very versatile. Uh, 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 in my career, I, I had many, many, many jobs or roles. I will say because I'm I'm in the same company, and I always. Uh, told myself uh, is there something I'm gonna learn new if it's yes so I will choose that and I will decide to take this mission or this path or this technology and uh, at some point I found myself um, I questioned myself uh, because I'm not uh, an expert in one field and I thought it was a weakness but then I realized it was my strength so it's good to to explore many many roads All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. Any other question? Go ahead. Don't hesitate. You won't have the chance to ask me later. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, what do you think is... What do you think is a good way for someone to uh, find motivation to do things? If I'm like uh, unmotivated and I need like some motivation to get up and do, do my work. Um, uh, where I would say uh, reading about uh, success stories, uh, reading about uh, good discoveries that change something in uh, someone's life. Um, we always have, we all have those moments when we are really not mo motivated and we feel like it's the end of the world. But uh, just uh, uh, think about, uh, it's gonna be better in one week, in two weeks, I'm gonna do that. So always, that's what I do when I feel like uh, this way, when I feel like I'm lost and I'm, I'm, I'm not really motivated. I always think about something new I'm gonna do or explore and I will feel better and it will motivate me. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for your question. Um, I have another question. Yeah. Um, where, uh, where do you come with uh, wh where do you find a, a some, something as a source of uh, inspiration for innovation uh, of coming up with new ideas yeah as i said earlier first i i read a lot about what's new or the new discoveries i'm i'm really curious um, about what uh, has been developed lately 
And also, um, I always take the time to uh, explore around me, uh, talk with people who are not, uh, especially in my field or in my department or in my company, to try to understand the complexity of paradigms that are in other fields or other jobs. And that's how, for me, you can uh, uh, anticipate needs and be uh, ahead uh, on your time. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. So, um, Fela, uh, would you would you be able to leave us with some tips, some advice, uh, particularly for the girls joining the industry? Uh, what would you leave them with? Uh, what kind of advice? Um, I mean, many of them uh, might be on their journey for the first time, taking first steps um, in technology. Some are not interested um, in tech yet. And I mean, we know there are so many roles and jobs in tech. One doesn't need to know how to code. To yeah. Be in tech. But um, what advice would you offer to those who are just starting on their journeys? Um, many advices. <laughs> um, I would say, first of all, don't be afraid because it's, uh, in the tech field, uh, there is so many, many jobs, so many, many specialities, so many, many things you need to learn. Um, you just you just need to jump in the pool and try and see uh, if it suits you. Because I know that uh, I have uh, some members in my, my private life that ask me, "Do I need? To, do you uh, do you think I need to be a data scientist? Do you think do you think I need to be a developer? Do you think I need to to work in the systems and etc." Um, I think uh, what's good in technology that you can switch always. That's that's not a problem. It's not like in medicine if you're. Uh, if you're in a field, you cannot change. You need to, to study again. Um, you always need to um, stay on the page because there is always new technologies, new frameworks, new uh, paradigms that we, that we use. Um, you need to um, read a lot. You need really to read a lot. Stay open, communicate. Uh, try to understand uh, what's um, what others uh, are doing because uh, you cannot uh, comprehend or uh, understand all of it at once in the beginning. Be confident. Um, don't let uh, anyone tell you it's complicated, it's not interesting. Everyone has his singular path and his singular road to take. Um, you need also to have a, what what saved me and what uh, really uh, helped me. It, it was the, my culture background because I wasn't only interested in technology. So, uh, for example, working on the chatbot, uh, there were some HR questions, RGPD questions that was uh, were more cultural or uh, 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 economics point. So you, you need also to to learn about that, to have a good background on that. And um, to sum up, uh, also um, you need to work really hard on your English because it's the language of the tech world. Uh, so you need to be good at, uh, d d don't, um, uh, neglect that. So you need to, whenever you're bilingual, it's or you you speak three, four languages. It's always a plus. That's it. I think. 